Hello and welcome to this video on how to run a two-parameter logistic item response theory model in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods and often involving the M Plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources, including a link to my weekly stats newsletter, as well as additional videos and workshops. In this video, I want to show you how you can run a unidimensional IRT model in the M plus software, specifically a two parameter logistic model, or we also call this a Birnbaum model. Sometimes this is often a model that we fit when we run IRT in addition to maybe a one parameter logistic model or rush model. And I have a separate video that you can check out here on this channel in which I discuss the rush model in M plus. So how does the M plus syntax work for a for an IRT model in general? So in general, M plus treats IRT models pretty much as if they were factor models. So M plus thinks that really what is be happening behind the scenes is that we're fitting a single factor latent trait model where we measure a single latent variable or factor that is continuous. But in this case, we ha it's a special case where we have factor indicators that are binary or dichotomous. And so, it, it, but in, in other regards, it is the same idea as fitting a factor model to continuous variables where we have a single factor and the items or indicators measure that factor. And so M plus thinks of IRT models in the same way within a factor analysis framework. And so this is also how then the model is set up. So if you're familiar already with M plus and with the M plus software for factor models, then you'll have a really easy time understanding how IRT models work in M plus because this is pretty much the same idea. We just have to make sure we inform M plus about the fact that our items in this case are not continuous and we have to se uh, select a specific estimator so that we can be sure that this is actually an IRT model and not some other kind of unidimensional um, factor model. So first of all in M plus we specify our data file here. So the raw data are in this text file cct.txt and then this file doesn't contain variable names so the names are listed here in my um, variable command under names in the order in which they appear in the data file. We use the use variables command to select items from that list that we want to use in our analysis. In this case, I'm using these four items here, SCR1 through SCR4. Those are items from a supposedly unidimensional spatial ability test called the cube comparison test where you have cube figures and you have to look at the patterns and you have to decide through mental rotation which of the cubes matches a target cube. And so we're analyzing these four items here with a two parameter logistic model. And so one thing that's specific about specifying IRT models in M plus is that we have to define the items as categorical. Categorical in M plus means binary or ordinal data. M plus does not distinguish between binary and ordinal in terms of the subcommand, it determines from the data whether the items are dichotomous or whether they are polydomous ordinal. And so um, this could also work. You could also do this for polydomous data. If you had ordinal items, then they would be listed in the same way. In this case, the items are dichotomously scored right or wrong, zero or zero for wrong, one for correct solution. And now um, these are listed under categorical and plus will automatically determine that those are binary items with only two categories. Furthermore, what is important in order to get an IRT model in M plus is that under analysis, you specify as the estimator ML for maximum likelihood. And the reason this is important is because M plus by default would use a different estimator called WLSMV and that would result in a probit factor model being fit to these data as opposed to a logit model, a logistic item response model. And so you would get a different model. The results may be similar, but it wouldn't be an IRT model. And so 
This is important. If you leave this out, this command analysis estimator equals ML, you will not get a classical Birnbaum two parameter logistic model, but instead you would get a probit um, factor model. Next, you can see in the model statement, this looks like a factor model. If you're familiar with the syntax in M plus for specifying a factor model or structural equation model with latent variables, then you know that we are using the by statement in M plus to uh, specify a latent variable and um, a continuous latent variable and to inform M plus about how this variable is measured. In this case, the four items SCR1 through SCR4 are the measures. So the trait is measured by those indicators and the label for the latent variables is um, your choice. So I choose the label trait because oftentimes in IRT we uh, also call latent or call IRT models latent trait models because we're measuring a continuous latent trait variable but you could also just call it f for factor or whatever. So this is the simple line of code that will allow this model to be a two parameter logistic IRT model. Now why is this going to be a two parameter model and not a rush model, a one parameter logistic model? In a rush model, you would have equal item discrimination parameters. So the slopes of the item characteristic curves would all be the same for the items under the rush model. That's why it's a one parameter logistic model because it only has an item difficulty parameter. But the two parameter logistic model has not only an item difficulty or location parameter, but also a slope parameter of the logistic function. So the item characteristic curves can differ in their slopes. And um, in M plus, the default is in a factor model that the slope parameters, so the factor loadings, so say, in the terminology of factor analysis are freely estimated. And so this is, so say, the default then that um, here factor loadings will be able to differ, or will be estimated such that they can differ between these items and that translates into different item characteristic curve slopes in an IRT sense or different item discrimination parameters as we say in the IRT terminology. So for a rush model you would have to fix all those loadings to be equal across items and I show that in my separate video on the rush model and so that would be different from the M plus default. You would have to make sure that the item loadings on the trade latent variables are all the same in order to get a rush model with equal item discrimination parameters. So here now the factor loadings will differ and so the discrimination parameters will also differ as we will see in the output. And then finally we include the plot option here so that we can look at item characteristic curves and if you want there are also other um, plots available for IRT under this option type equals plot 3. So let's run the model and see what we get in the output. This analysis is based on 345 cases. You can see the estimator is maximum likelihood. And since the items were defined as categorical in M plus, we get proportions and counts for categorical variables here. You wouldn't get that for continuous variables, uh, obviously. And so you can see here the item difficulties. You can see how the categories were um, what the proportions were in each category. You can see that item one was apparently pretty a pretty easy item because 72.2% solved this item, 27.8% did not solve this item, and that translated into 249 versus 96 cases with regard to our sample of 345. So for each item, you can check the item difficulties, so to say in terms of the proportions, you can see item two was more difficult here, it was more 50-50, and then item three um, was even more difficult, it was the most difficult item actually, with about three quarters did not solve this item. Next, you wanna check that you get the message the model estimation terminated normally so that you can make sure there was no estimation problem. And then you get the model fit statistics where you can look at for example, information criteria to compare different models. For example, you could use that to compare this model to a rush model to see if that um, fits better or worse than a rush model or other models. 
and you get chi-square tests of model fit to determine the absolute model fit of um, this model. So here you can see the Pearson statistic is given and the likelihood ratio chi-square statistic. Ideally, they should lead to similar or the same results. And that would be a sign that the asymptotic conditions for these statistics are being met. In this case, they should be met because we have only four items. So we don't have that many uh, response patterns and uh, so that many possible patterns. And so with 345 cases, we should be able to approximate the chi-square distribution fairly well. And you can see that these statistics actually really do look very similar. The Pearson statistic is 4.069. The likelihood ratio statistic is 4.175. And so the p-values are also very similar, 0.77 versus 0.76. Both statistics show that this model fits the data well. A significant p-value would indicate that a model is rejected because this tests the null hypothesis that the model fits exactly in the population and um, this hypothesis here is not rejected. Next are the results in factor analysis metrics, so to say, under model results. And these are typically not the ones that we look at when we do IRT analysis. You can see here that the loadings are given here. The first loading is fixed to one for identification as is uh, customary with factor analysis models. And then the other loadings are freely estimated. With a rush model, all these loadings would be fixed to one um, and would not differ. And so here they can differ and that translates into different um, discrimination, item discrimination parameters. The threshold parameters then translate into our item location or item difficulty parameters in IRT metric and I'll show you where they are given below. And then M plus does estimate a trade factor, latent factor variance in this factor analysis parametrization. Next are results in probability scale and we've already seen those. So those are the same proportions that we've always already seen where we talk when I talked about item difficulty. So these are redundant in this case. And then after that is what we really care about the IRT parametrization for this model. And here you can see under the by statements, we get the item discrimination parameters. So those are the multiplicative or slope parameters that show how the items differ in terms of their slope of the item characteristic curve. And then after that, we get the item difficulty parameters or item location parameters here also for each item. Now, to visualize these IRT results, we can look at item characteristic curves in M plus by going to plot and then view plots. And so you can see there are a bunch of different options. You can look at descriptive plots for like histograms, scatter plots, sample proportions and estimated probabilities, and then also item characteristic curves, information curves, latent variable distribution plots. So let's take a look at the item characteristic curves as an example here. I'm gonna click on view, and then you can either look at each item in a separate plot, or you could look at selected items in, a, in the same plot, or you could look at all items in a single plot, and that's what I'm gonna do here. So item char characteristic curves for all items in one plot, and then next, we're looking at the second category, item solved, and then we can just skip this and go with the defaults and say finish. And so here you have your ICC curves. You can see some items here have steeper slopes indicating stronger discrimination. So say at least at a descriptive level, other curves are more flat and the curves can um, can uh, cut into one another, so to say, so they can be um, the, since the discrimination parameters are different, they're not all parallel, as you can see here. Now, of course, we don't know if that's a significant difference. We should also fit the rush model for the same data and see if the rush model fits significantly worse. In the rush model, all those ICCs would be parallel. And so if that model fits the data well, also we might conclude that really the discrimination parameters are not needed and that the items 
have the same discrimination. So that's something that we should definitely do is also look at the rush model for the same data, compare the fit of the two models, and then make a decision about which model is best for these data. I hope you liked this video to learn more about item response theory models in M+. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including, including videos and workshops. And if you like, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.